Hi everybody, I'm Mike Poland, the scientist in charge of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, and this is the monthly update for April 1st of 2023. April 1st, April Fool's Day. It's a time when some humans might like to prank one another. We thought it might be a good occasion to talk about when animals prank humans. This is actually something we see in the volcano world pretty often. For example, there might be herds of elk or bison that pass by a seismometer. They make a lot of noise. These are large animals. Now that's noise that we can filter out. We can still see small earthquakes when these herds are walking by. But it's sort of funny thought to think that maybe these animals are kind of pranking us as they're making a lot of noise cruising by these seismometers. Some of the seismometers that are out for research deployments have been kicked by animals. And it's kind of a funny thought to think maybe the bison saw this and decided they were going to play soccer with it. We also see animals interacting with some of our permanent stations. Now, generally, we try to keep these stations out of the way. Of course, we want to coexist with the environment. So when we install a seismic station or a GPS station, we put it in a place that won't impact plant and animal life to the extent that we can. But just like humans, animals are curious. And when they see these things, they might go up to investigate. We've seen plenty of evidence of bison nose prints on solar panels or bear paw prints on solar panels. And occasionally, some of the smaller critters might find some of the wiring interesting, and they'll yank the wires right out of the instrument boxes, birds and marmots and things like that. And that causes the instrument to go down, so we have to go back and maybe do some repair work. A lot of curiosity there, just like humans. A lot of pranks on those animals, just like humans might do to each other. All right, now let's talk about what happened during the month of March in Yellowstone, including a little bit about a small seismic swarm that occurred in the north part of Yellowstone Lake on March 29th. Seismicity in the Yellowstone region in March was slightly above average, and this was mostly due to the occurrence of two swarms in the park. The University of Utah Seismograph Stations, which operates the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 354 earthquakes during the month. The largest was a magnitude 3.7, and it was part of a swarm of about 106 earthquakes that occurred beneath the north part of Yellowstone Lake. This got a fair bit of attention because it had these two magnitude 3 events, the 3.7 and a 3.1, and occurred mostly on March 29th. But that wasn't actually even the largest swarm of the month in terms of numbers of earthquakes. That belongs to this swarm over here that occurred near West Yellowstone between March 13th and March 18th. There were 147 events that were part of this swarm, the largest being a magnitude 2.7. Aside from these two swarms, seismicity was scattered throughout the region, and as usual, most of it occurred in this area between Hebgen Lake and the north central part of Yellowstone National Park. This is the most seismically active part of the park. And just to give you a little flavor of what these seismic swarms look like on our seismic records, this is the record from Pelican Cone, a seismometer located in that area. You can see it was quiet through 28th into the morning of the 29th, and then the earthquakes just started to bang away. And this is what a swarm looks like, a number of discrete events. Sometimes they happen so close together that they're hard to tell apart from one another. And there is the magnitude 3.7 right here that occurred at about 8.24 in the morning, mountain time. And after these events, it sort of petered back out, just a couple of scattered ones. This is a pretty typical swarm for the Yellowstone region, nothing really special about it. Uh, about 100 events with magnitude 3s is not unusual in the Yellowstone area. Now looking at deformation in the Yellowstone region, we've seen continued trends of what's been going on actually for many, many years. Since 2015, Yellowstone caldera has been subsiding by a rate of two to three centimeters, about an inch or two per year. This is the last two years of vertical deformation at the White Lake GPS station on the east side of the caldera. And each one of these blue dots represents a day of data. And over the course of this two years, there's overall subsidence and you can see during the summer months, there's a little bit of uplift or a pause in that substance. That occurs as groundwater is recharged by melting snow. That snowmelt sort of puffs up the ground like a sponge. And it lasts through the summer. And then you can see right here in October, we switched back to substance that's been ongoing since the end of last summer. If we go to the west side of the caldera, near Old Faithful, on the Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome, the story is much the same. We had these summertime pauses in substance or little bits of uplift. And then once the summer ends here in October, we go back to that subsidence of a few centimeters, an inch or two per year. Also see the same thing in the Norris area. Norris doesn't have quite as much deformation over the last few years as we've seen in the caldera, but there's that summertime uplift that occurred summer of 2022. We get into October and then back to a slight amount of subsidence, a couple of centimeters at this point, just about an inch since the end of last summer. And finally, looking at Largest geyser in the world in terms of eruptions, Steamboat Geyser. Unfortunately, our temperature monitoring stations continue to be down, but there is the stream gauge 
on Tantalus Creek, and that is where all of the water that comes out of Steamboat Geyser eventually flows. So we can use the stream gauge to detect any eruptions of Steamboat Geyser. Now these spikes that you're seeing here and there throughout the month of March, these are all related to storms, precipitation. We don't see any spikes that are related, obviously, to geyser eruptions. It's possible there may be something hiding in there, but it doesn't look likely. If you look at January, when you had eruptions right here, January 5th, and another one on January 28th, those spikes are very, very apparent. We don't see those at all in March, so it appears that Steamboat has stayed quiet since the month of January. Well, that does it for the monthly update for April 1st, 2023. Now, remember, if you have any questions at all or would like more information, feel free to email us anytime. Our address is yvowebteam, all one word, at usgs.gov. We'll be back next month with the May 1st update. Until then, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.